Good afternoon, everyone. We're just waiting for our presenter to get on. He's having some technical difficulties with the sound at the moment. Um, but I want to welcome you today to the presentation delivered by On Campus as uh, to how to become a doctor. Um, during the presentation today, you're going to hear about um, essentially the NHS, um, ways in which people become doctors and their specialities, um, and how On Campus uh, UK North can help you progress to um, our various medical partners, uh, UCLan. Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland, St George's University and University of Nicosia. So um, this will be the key aims. At the end of the presentation, we will be having a Q&A session. So please put your, Q, your questions um, into the Q&A uh, chat box or the actual chat box on the webinar. And we will endeavor to um, answer those questions towards the end. Um, I can see Andrew's joined us again. Um, Andrew, can you hear us now? And is, the, is it working? I can hear you. Can Fantastic. you hear me? I can hear you. Great. We're, we're, we're away now. Excellent stuff. Oh, fab. Okay. I'm so very sorry. I'm on my, onto my third laptop. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully the presentation will go smoothly now. Um, I, can you... I've put the presentation up on the screen. Um, so I shared that. Um, can you see that presentation on your screen now, Andrew? I can, yes. Excellent stuff. Um, I think the easiest way to do is if I just move the slides forward when you want me to move them forward, yeah? Um, yeah, that's great. Okay, great. All right. Um, so, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Andrew, our Centre Director for On Campus UK North. He'll be taking you through the presentation today. Over to you, Andrew. Thanks very much, James. Um, and I, I, I will start again by just saying um, apologies uh, that um, I was late. We just got to love technology at the moment, especially when we need it the most. Um, so as I said, I am now on my third Zoom device, so I'm using my mobile phone. So if I look and sound um, a, bit, uh, a bit croaky, that's why. Um, I think the next most important thing to say is um, to everybody, again, um, if you weren't here with us um, last time but also I'd just like to reiterate just how much we're all thinking of you in this difficult time um, and that really that all of our thoughts and prayers are just with all of you your families um, and that the most important thing is that we just hope that um, you're all doing well that you're all staying safe uh, but also just to reiterate how much we want to work together during this time um, and that we are just you know we feel uh, particularly blessed to have um, all of you as partners um, and it's a pleasure working with you all um, and you, or you don't get to hear that very often from the colleges um, and so I just want to tell you sort of on behalf of all the centre heads and centre directors at the um, at on campus that you know, we love working with you and we really do just want to um, work together through this difficult time so that we all come out the other side stronger. So that's that. Um, so the reason that we're all here together today is to answer that very important question that students ask all the time. How do you become a doctor? Um, and I think that it's quite easy for all of us to give very vague answers here. And so what we wanted to do for the next sort of 20, 30 minutes is really just go through um, these slides to talk you through how you can um, explain to your students the process of becoming a doctor um, in the UK and also around the world. Now, it's going to be um, impossible for me to um, have the answers to everything here, but also impossible really to cover the whole breadth of, um, of what becoming a doctor means because really, when people say I want to become a doctor, that covers a whole range of uh, different professions. Um, and becoming a doctor could mean sitting um, as a, a member of the community in your local general pa practitioners or um, your local doctor's surgery, seeing uh, people from your local area. Or it could mean being in a hospital um, doing A&E, or it could be um, all the way through to sort of surgery. Um, but then there are obviously hundreds of um, professions in the middle of that, of all those things that people choose to do. And over the years that they spend with, um, with us and then with 
um, the university and then on into their specialisms. There really are literally hundreds of different things that people can choose to specialise in, in the health system in the UK and abroad. So what we're going to try and do is give a basic picture of how students can expect to move through um, those stages um, and also to help them with their current dreams. So if their dreams at the moment are just to become a doctor, then we don't want to confuse them too much. We just want to work with them and really to tell them from the beginning that they have plenty of time to choose their specialism. Um, and that the whole point of the next six to eight years of their life is for them to have a chance to work through what they love, what they're good at, um, what they find has a real affinity with them. Um, and then after that time, they can make a good informed decision. So we're going to look through um, the UK health system. Um, and what it looks like, the journey looks like becoming a, to becoming a doctor in the UK. I'm afraid, James, I've lost the PowerPoint. Um, there we go. Um, then, of course, why choose UCLan? Um, there are lots of reasons why, uh, really, it, not just as students. I mean, for how it's just such an easy sell for agents. Um, and I'd just like to go through a little bit of that. Then what the process looks like um, getting through to MBBS at UCLan. Then we'll just look at some other options that students have because we want to make sure that um, you know and that you're able to sell to your students exactly that they have a lot of not just choice but a lot of backup so that um, they they know that whatever happens they have a they really do with us have an excellent chance of moving on towards their dream of working in that. Uh, in this profession. So let's start with the UK health system. Um, everybody in the UK uh, is proud of the NHS, um, what we call our National Health Service. Um, so it, it was formed um, many, many years ago and has been, it's really the jewel in the crown of what we call our welfare system. And that is that we aim as, uh, as a country to look after everybody, um, whether they have, um, whether they are vulnerable or whether they are not. And so that means that uh, through our taxes, um, we make sure that everybody um, has good healthcare available to them, regardless of how much they earn. Um, and so we have made uh, abundantly sure that, it's, um, that it does meet the needs of everybody. Um, and overall, that it's free. Um, I think it's it's become so important to everybody in the UK that you don't have to go to a to a hospital or a doctor's surgery at a time when you need, um, because nobody chooses when to go to hospital. So it's when you suddenly need it that you don't need to fill in a load of forms or f worry about your your insurance or. Uh, things like that, that you know you can just walk in and you don't have to worry. Um, everything will be done and you can walk out the other side as well. And I think that's a very special system for, um, for obviously for, for the UK population to have, but it's a very special system for doctors and nurses to work in. Um, it brings a great sense of camaraderie and it also means that they can concentrate purely on the, um, the work of, uh, of making people well. Um, it also means that we tend to see all the sick people. It means that nobody um, just lives with an illness um, because they're worried about paying for it. So it means that doctors and nurses get to see, a, you know, from their perspective, a very exciting range um, uh, of different things that are happening from, uh, from drug addiction all the way through to complex surgery. As that last point says, the vast majority of UK doctors do work within the NHS. Um, and the main reason for that is that we don't have that many private hospitals. They are available, um, but most doctors in the UK choose to work within the NHS um, because of the reasons I've highlighted above. So how do you become a doctor in the UK? Well, it's a long period. Um, and I think it's, it's probably best to uh, to be straight with students right from the beginning. 
I always am when I'm interviewing your students. Um, and I tend to interview sort of over 300 students every year. Um, so first of all, if we just look at this graph or, or this, um, this timeline together, the first thing you'll notice actually is that um, we have our year missed off at the beginning. Um, and so for, um, for, for your students, when they're coming through to us, there's actually an extra year that is, that is plugged onto the beginning. Um, so you have our foundation year, the MUFP. And then of course, generally you have about five years at medical school. Um, so after your pre-med with us, um, you then have five years at, at medical school doing your MBBS. And that's if you choose to study in the UK. If you choose to study, we'll talk a little bit later about if you choose to study somewhere else. Um, and if you do, then that can be six years. Um, or if you already have a degree, then you can do a conversion, um, a conversion course to becoming a doctor. And that can take four years. But we can talk a little bit about that further on, because I, I want to make sure that we, we cover all the different bases for what your students might potentially come in and ask for, depending on their particular circumstances. Um, but as a basic rule, they do a year with us, five years at MBBS, and then two years doing what we call the F1 and F2, which are again confusingly called foundation years. Um, so your students uh, will end up doing two sets of foundation courses, one with us and then one uh, six years later with the NHS. After that, um, and I want to say, as I said before, that those foundation years, you are getting paid for them. So you are working. Um, and this is when you begin your journey as a junior doctor. After that, you'll then move into your, um, your years of very specific training. And this really then just depends on what it is that you want to specialize in. And so you can see there that um, lots of different, um, there are lots of different routes and this by no means covers the whole uh, wealth of what doctors um, can do with their MBBS after their foundation years. But you can see there that some go into different types of core training. Um, in the middle there you have um, students who choose to do three years working in a general practitioner's surgery which is uh, much more seeing uh, members of the public with slightly smaller ailments who don't need to go to hospital. Um, so they become much more of a part of the community. So that takes three years. Um, and then, of course, if you want to go on into um, things like paediatrics um, and then further on than that into um, surgeries and the, con uh, the complex surgeries, uh, it takes you up to eight years then to, um, to, do, those, to do those trainings. Um, with, of course, your core training before, so 10 years in total. Once you've done that, you never stop learning, um, and you will, never hear that a, you will never hear a doctor say that they have finished their training completely, because actually, um, for the next 40 years or more of being a consultant, um, doctors are continually required to keep learning, to keep growing, and to keep up with um, medical advances that are happening all the time. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I'm most proud of that's happening in UCLan at the moment is that they are developing um, and working with the NHS to, do, um, to help surgeons by um, helping them to do the most complex surgeries beforehand using virtual reality. Um, and they have now virtual reality suites for the NHS at UCLan. Um, and it's, it's things like this that um, you can you can assure your students that over the years that they're here and then the years in the future that the NHS and of course us and UCLan stay on the cutting edge of doctor training um, and that they will be part of us for many years to come as alumni. So let's have a look then at the, the foundation years and what happens in them. I'm not going to just really sort of run through um, each one um, and just read out the slides. I mean, they are there for you to, to go back and look at if you want to, and you will be sent this presentation. Um, but the most important things here are that you, um, you have to do these in order to 
work in the NHS. And the only way that you're going to be able to get onto those are if you've completed your MBBS in this country. Um, so when we talk about an MBBS, it's a British medical degree. Um, and so when you have an MBBS, it will be from a qualifying British university. You will see a variety of different um, letters after people's names. They are all um, medical degrees. So in the US, you'll get an MD. Um, and in Ireland, uh, you get a, an MB, BCH, CHO, um, a long list of um, a long list of letters that are based from Latin, um, but they are all essentially medical degrees. But depending on where you get them from, it will be um, it, it won't necessarily be that you uh, that your degree will be accredited uh, by the General Medical Council of the UK. If you get an MBBS, then you can be assured that it will be. If you if you have students that do not that already have um, uh, let's say an MD from America and they want to come and do their F1 and F2 years, the only way they're going to be able to do that is by taking their exams beforehand, which is what we call the PLAB, um, which is the equivalent to the US Emily. Um, and that just means that whatever country you're in uh, that you wish to practice in, they will have their own set of exams, uh, which means that you, um, you are, once you've taken those, they know that you are eligible to practice in their country. Um, and if you have any questions on that, and I'm, I'm, I'm slightly aware that I perhaps haven't explained that as well as I could. Um, but if you have any questions on that, please do save them for me at the end and I'll try and be a little bit more specific. Andrew, it may just be a uh, good time to remind people there is a Q&A tab that people can um, write their questions in and we will answer them as we go along or towards the end. That's great. Thank you all. Thanks, James. That gave me a, a chance to do the all-important thing for an English person is to have a good sip of tea. I, I thought you looked like you needed a break there, Andrew, before continuing. Thanks very much. This is the problem with video, isn't it? That actually you can see me getting parched. Right. Foundation years then. So um, F1 and F2, they, are, um, uh, they, they work together. Um, you can't do your f1 and then not do your f2 you have to do both but there are actually ways internationally of getting around having to do both um, most notably from um, the course at the university of nicosia which again we can talk about a bit later but essentially what they are are that the general medical council of the uk sets learning objectives for the time that the students are in these years um, and this is the time when they are actually able to register with the GMC. So this is when they can say that they actually are doctors. So at the end of their, um, at the end of their course with the university, they will have an MBBS, but it will only be after um, their first foundation year, F1, that they will be able to register with the GMC um, and then actually be able to be um, a practicing doctor on a ward. Um, F2 years are um, more placement orientated um, and then at the end of those years again uh, it's then thought that you will be very much ready to go out into the real world and to start your specialization um, and that any consultants that take you on um, will know that you have an excellent background um, and are ready to come on um, and learn your specialism. So here are some, uh, some FAQs um things that come through uh and i want you to know that i didn't write these um but what i will do we'll come back to them at the end if you have any um, any specific questions unless james you want me to go through them right now um no not at the moment no andrew i think you've covered these ones that's great i'll move on great there are actually the third one there what i'm going to do I'm, I'm just going to cover that quickly because i felt that i perhaps um, skirted a little bit can I practice in my home country after graduating from medical school in the UK? Uh, so I, as I said, do about 300 interviews every year. Um, when I do those interviews, I ask every single student what they would like to do in the future. And I would say 90% of them say that they would like to stay in the UK 
uh, oh, sorry, that they would like to go home and practice medicine in their home countries afterwards. When they get to the UK, I would say that that reverses and that 90% of them then say that they want to stay. So whether it's something they think that I want to hear in, their in, uh, in the interview, I don't know. But something changes and certainly large numbers of, uh, of students do want to stay in the UK after they finish. Um, and so obviously if they, get, if they come and get an MBBS from UCLan, they are able to stay. Can you practice in your home country? This really depends on what country um, they are going back to. And every country has different rules for how um, returning doctors with British medical degrees, um, how they are allowed to, to, to practice and where they, are, where they have to start. So that chart, that timeline that we showed, that one was for the UK. Every other country will have its own timeline and will also have its own set of exams that students will have to take um, to allow them to, uh, to become registered doctors in that country. For some countries, that's a lot easier. Um, and for some countries, it, it can be a bit more challenging. Uh, for instance, the, the US MLE is, is quite a difficult set of exams. Um, but I would advise you all in that case, if you do get these students, um, coming through asking this question that it might perhaps be a good idea to just do a tiny bit of research for what doctors returning doctors need to do to register in your country uh, because obviously I, uh, I can't hold all that information uh, in my head all the time uh, but if you need any help please do reach out which moves us on to why choose UCLan um, well um, when we've got here, why choose UCLan? I mean, we're looking really at why choose UK North for UCLan. Um, and I think the main reason for that is that students know that they're guaranteed an interview for the MBBS. And this word guaranteed, I think, is often the most important point in the sale um, to, uh, to international students because everybody wants to know that they can move on in their dream um, and that we're not just selling them one course, we're actually selling them a whole timeline for their future. And the more that we can do that, um, the better served we will be. So what are we guaranteeing if, uh, if they come to UK North to do, um, to do our pre-med? Well, they are certainly guaranteed an interview. So every year we get, um, all of our students through um, for interviews um, and we do two sets of interviews one in March and one in uh, one in late May or June. What happens with those interviews is that um, the students have a huge amount of, um, of preparation for them. Uh, we have staff that are dedicated to doing interview practice um, and last year as I said before in our last meeting 85% um, of students that interviewed got through um, to the MBBS programme, which is a phenomenal result and something that we're very, very proud of. What does it mean then to be guaranteed an interview? Um, well, what happens in the UK is that if you are going into any form of healthcare, you have to pass what is called um, an MMI, which is a multiple mini interview. These multiple mini interviews take about 45 minutes to an hour and they are seven students in a room with seven different participants, uh, sorry, with seven different interviewers. They then move around and each meet uh, the interviewer once. So they, they, they have seven different small interviews um, and those interviews go through a variety of different things. I want to say at this stage that one of those interview questions is about work experience um, and that is why I always ask for work experience to have already been done before students start um, their uh, MUFP, their foundation program with us. The reason for that is that as soon as they start um, they won't be able to pass their interview, their, um, their interview for MBBS unless they have the work experience and they can't do it in the UK once they join us. So I just hope we can work as a team on that, that um, we can both just reiterate to students how important it is 
um, to get some work experience in some sort of care environment before they come. Uh, my phone says it's about to die, which is not a particularly great thing. I don't know why it's got full battery. This is like the anti-technology day. James, you may just have to uh, to just sort of talk a bit about UCLan for two minutes while I sort this out. Okay, not a problem, Andrew. I'll just take over for the moment. Um, I think continuing from what Andrew was saying, the guaranteed interview is definitely one of our key selling points in the um, MBBS Foundation, um, and it does allow students to um, have excellent preparation for that um, multiple mini interview, which is very tough. I mean, you know, we have that guaranteed interview in place. We prepare the students very well, um, but obviously none of us would want to be treated by a doctor who hasn't had a rigorous admissions process into these um, courses. Um, so the other things I think that are important to remember are that we have very good early patient contact with UK NHS settings. Um, there are volunteers from uh, local community and connections with the local NHS hospitals, um, essentially um, creating excellent um, work experience and understanding of healthcare settings for these multiple mini interviews um, as well. Um, whilst Andrew is still um, dealing with his technology, Andrew, are you back yet? No, I'll take over um, and tell you a little bit about why to choose UCLan. We've been working with UCLan for over 10 years, um, and it's been over five years now that we've been working with their medical or their newly created medical, um, medical department. So we have a very good relationship with the university, which means that we get to use some other state-of-the-art facilities. Um, and UCLan's medical department does have excellent facilities right the way through from life-size human, uh, human simulators for all ages, um, equipped specialist industry standard fittings and facilities, um, and really does prepare students for working in the real environment when they get there. Some of you who may have visited UCLan, I know we have some partners on the call today that have visited, will have seen the um, life-size human simulators for all ages, so they will be able to, or they replace the sort of the traditional cadavers. Um, so majority of what they are doing is all automated, essentially, okay? Um, so the list you've got on your screen at the moment is just an idea as to the facilities that they have. Um, particularly good is, is, is the primary care settings, which include a GP surgery um, and a patient's home setting as well um, that allows that. Hello, Andrew, you're back. I am back. Um, uh, I was just, just talking a little bit about the facilities at UCLan, mentioning that um, the life-size human simulators and especially the GP surgery and patients um, home care settings, which give them real-world experience through these facilities. Um, if you want to expand on that a little bit and then move on, that would be great. Sure. Uh, I'm sure James has covered it very well, but just to say that I've gone around a lot of universities in my time. Um, I've seen a lot of different um, medical setups. And I can honestly say that UCLans, uh, being the freshest and the newest, um, has, has easily the best um, facilities. Um, and there's part of UCLan that if you've come and if you've visited, and I'm, I'm actually sure some of you have, it's like walking into a hospital. Um, and it's very, very real world. And when you walk around in UCLan, you often see people in um, scrubs, in nurses' uniforms, in uh, paramedic uniforms and it, it genuinely feels like you're you're going to work from from pretty much day one of your degree you feel like you're actually working in a hospital um, but yeah it's it's absolutely incredible and once again I just want to say that you are all always welcome to come and visit um, when all of this uh, awful thing is over so please do come and look for yourself So again, this is a, a really good overview of what happens at UCLan. And I think that's one of the, again, the questions that we get regularly from, um, from our students before they, uh, before they join. I always have a short, um, <clears throat> you, can all, you can all be uh, assured that at the end of the interview process that I do with the students, that I always give them time um, to be able to ask me any questions. 
So um, if there are things that you're unsure of, um, you can know that either myself or the head of medicine um, or Linda, who um, is the deputy head at the moment, um, we always give the students a chance to ask questions. So if there's anything you're not sure of, just tell them um, they will be meeting a member of the team um, and that they will always have that, um, that option to, to get into detail with us in person. But yeah, you can see here, and this is just a good thing for you to be able to refer back to when talking to students about this. Um, really what you can see is that um, what students are aiming towards is year five. Um, so they're doing, uh, they're doing some things that are evidence-based, some things that are skills-based, and some things that are science-based. Um, and they're doing that every year. And as you can see, the, the skills um, element stays the same um, in every year, um, but the clinical practice gets larger in years three and four. Really, the thing to point out um, is that there is some clinical medicine right from year one. And that means that students uh, can be guaranteed that they're going to be doing things, meeting patients, being feeling like they're in the real world um, right from year one. They will not be set in, sat in labs looking at dummies the entire time. It will not be theory the entire time. It will be practice a good amount of the time. Um, and UCLan strongly believes that that is the way to get students excited about what they're doing but also learning more about what they're doing. And then you can see that we're just aiming really to year five, which is when you're finally transitioning into your clinical practice, where you're getting much more time working with patients in the real world um, and getting ready for your foundation one and foundation two years. Thanks, James. Um, and so again, these are again questions that we're asked regularly about ranking. Um, and I, first of all, I think the most important thing to say is that what students are aiming at here is not a ranked university. It's, it is a British medical degree. That is all that matters. There aren't that many universities in the UK that offer a British medical degree or offer a medical degree at all. Um, it's very difficult to get onto these um, courses. And internationally they are recognized um, and so really it's not about the ranking it's it's about being able to get into a university where you can come out the other end with a um, with a GMC recognized medical degree. Um, I've also got here UCLan mainly recruit international students to its MBBS qualification. Um, it is a hundred percent recognized by the NHS um, and it does make us different from other UK medical schools. I think the key here is to realise that the differences to other UK medical schools can only be positive for international students. It means that the course is entirely set up with international students in mind, which means that any complex um, vocabulary or lexicon that we, uh, that we put in place or that students need to know it's understood that there will be students who are learning these words for the first time. And so everything is covered from an international point of view. It also means that all of the students uh, are international together. It means that you're going to know people from a vast range of different countries. We have 52 different nationalities at the moment. Um, and so at the end, you're going to have a really wide idea of medicine around the world, um, but also um, partner medics all around the world. The biggest thing though about UCLan um, recruiting international students is that you can know and you can tell your students that that they are if they do well in the interview that they will be guaranteed a place. UCLan are not looking to thin out the numbers of international students through the interview process. I have been told by the Dean of the medical school that they would like every single one of our students. Um, he would like to take on every single one of our students every year. Um, and this year we're hoping to go up to 90 to 100 students. And they are again excited about being able to take on all of those. 
The reason for that is because they can only take international students. So it means that if you send students to us, you can tell them they have the best possible chance of going on and successfully getting into a British medical degree. So how do we get on um, from, our, um, from our course onto the MBBS? First of all, they have to pass their academics with 70%, and that's chemistry, biology, and we've missed off maths there. So there are three elements, chemistry, biology, and maths, um, which the students need to get 70% in. They also need to uh, get their English up, um, and their English needs to be at IELTS 7 or equivalent in every one of the different components. So reading, writing, speaking and listening all need to be at 7. I often tell students that have a higher level of English um, before they join that it is worth studying before they come, especially if they have the time to do it, to try and get an IELTS 7 before they come and start the course. This is especially true for some students who have IELTS 7 in all of their topics except for one. And we often find um, almost native English speakers, um, students whose um, family are first language English um, from all around the world, they will have IELTS 7 in everything except for 6.5 in writing. Again, please do encourage these students to take English before they come and to try and get that up because it means they won't have to go into English classes while they're here. Um, if students do come in with even one element that's slightly low, we have to put them in English classes um, to make sure that they get up to the required standard. So academics, English, and the third and final thing is the interview that we've, that we've talked about. Um, that means that, they, uh, that all the students apply uh, by doing their personal statements, uh, and again, they have a huge amount of help on this from Susan, who is our um, higher education uh, consultant who works with us. And she gives time every week to every single student, helping them to hone their interview skills, but also um, to get their application exactly right. And that is not just for UCLan. We encourage them to apply to a range of different university partners. Um, and so we work with them on all the different types of personal statement writing that they'll need. I think it's also really important to point out that there is no um, requirement for the UCAT or the BMAT, and that's the same with any of our partners. So none of those, uh, none of the four partners that we work with require the students to take the UCAT or the BMAT. Um, so here we have again some some FAQs. Um, I think the only one here that is that I really want to highlight is the first one. Um, and if anybody has any particular issues um, with any of the others, please do get in touch, um, or we can try and answer any specifics at the end. Uh, but we get this one all the time. I really want to study the MUFP, but um, I don't have good enough grades. Now. Um, I'm very sorry if in the past you have had replies from me um, through the team saying that this particular student um, isn't quite right for MUFP um, and I'm sorry if that, uh, <laughs> if that annoys you. Um, so I, I would like to apologise if I've ever done that to you but the reason that we do it is because um, I know just how difficult this course is and I've also seen what happens to students that can't make it and it's very, very discouraging. Um, and it also leaves them with very few options and a wasted year. Um, and we, we're just, um, it's very, very important to me and to the rest of the academic team that what we get um, out of students is that we get the best out of them. And we believe that we have other options that can get students to where they want to be. Um, it may just take a little bit longer or might be, not be quite the route that they were thinking of. So um, here are the options that students have. The first one is that if they have a slightly lower grade profile, they can do our life sciences course. And then if they get 65% in that, that they can then move on to our MUFP the following year. Um, and we will help them to do that. 
Um, that would mean that they would be with on campus for the two years, but at the end they would be able to progress on to, um, to UCLAN, um, all being well. If they don't want to do that and they want to um, do life sciences and move on to another one of our partners, we now have three other partners that we will look at later that, um, that all um, actually um, well we're in discussions but I think by the time you get um, by the time we get this for next year um, all partners will then take from life sciences directly into their medicine programs but we'll cover that in a bit um, I think we've kind of already covered this James um, so I'm gonna move on um, <clears throat> we've also talked about MMIs as well again if um, if you guys if any of you who are listening um, want more information on MMIs, um, I'm more than happy to pick that up at a different time. Um, but just so that you know that um, we've talked about what an MMI is, um, you have seven different interviews, um, in, in, including 10 different activities. Um, 